I will is not for sale today. Children of God, you see there is a freedom that comes when we understand that our will is not for sale. If we think it is for sale, we wrestle the rest of our lives. The power of the Holy Spirit has come so that we can say, No, I am his witness or his mortar in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. In other words, wherever we are, that is who we are. It's what we put on. It's not a program. It's not a character that we kind of use. It's just who we are. It's in our DNA. We are bought with a price, and that's it. There is a freedom and confidence that comes into our life when we realize who we are. That is our DNA. If we wrestle with that identity, we will be wrestling for the rest of our lives. We are the children of God. We have been brought with a price. The Holy Spirit has been given to us to give us strength to lie down. Our right to override God. Some people may think, that when we lay down that free will and receive a new freedom from mortal struggles, then we must pretty we must be pretty weak will now. They think we are spineless people because we have laid down our free will. God does not want us to get weak willed. On the on the contrary, He actually wants us to strengthen our will. He wants us to strengthen our will to do the right thing, not override Him. Our will is like an executive officer. It is to carry out the orders of the commander or the captain. It is to make sure that whenever the crew takes the lobby for something else, our will overrides them. God does not give the power of the Holy Spirit to be weak-willed. He gives the power to override our flesh. Strengthen your will to override the flesh, not the Lord. In the past, we would use our will to override God's will and submit to the flesh. Now we are to submit to the Lord and override the flesh. That is what brings freedom. How do we make the switch? Before Christ, it was the other way around. We would override God and submit to the flesh. To make that switch, we need power of the Holy Spirit. That is greater than we are. It is not redoing part of our lives. It's the full transformation. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, is a new creature. The old things pass away, behold, all things come new, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. How do we get this full transformation? It's only by the power of the Holy Spirit, otherwise we will wrestle with our flesh and we will lose and feel terrible about it. So God says, I will give you the power of the Holy Spirit and you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be a mortar. We are to lay down our right to override God and pick up and strengthen our will tonight to override the flesh we know as God's people if we are true to independence as the scripture says an inheritance gained inherently at the beginning will not be blessed in the end so we say all right God will you help me to trust you you wouldn't demean or depreciate us because of your because of our frailty Instead, you would give us a gift that if we trust you and yield our will to you, then you will make us the people you want us to be, and there will be freedom in life. I want to remind myself every day when I come to that choice. Holy Spirit, give me again the power to lay down my life to override God's will. I won't override your will, and I will override the flesh. The strength and power for us to do that then we begin to understand what it means to be a person led by the Spirit of God. The potter in the clay. Jeremiah chapter 18 paints a little picture of that. It talks about a potter's house. God said to Jeremiah, Go to the potter's house and observe how the potter is able to do everything he wants to do if the clay will submit to the potter. On the other hand, if the clay re rejects the potter because it has that r he has that right to do so, the clay is useless. We are to be like that moldable clay towards the Lord. We are to be a clay not hard or too soft. That is a balance that only the Holy Spirit can give to us. When we understand the power of the Holy Spirit has been given to us to lay down our right to override, overrule God, we will have the power to overrule the flesh and overcome the struggles. God understands that sometimes we are in that fight and we lose, not because we are evil, but because we are frail. 
He gives us a power beyond ourselves. He gives us a gift. His love for us is so great that He waits for us to trust Him, to see what is in store for us. There was a boy who spent days carving a boat. He handcrafted it, painted it, put sails on it, and balanced it just right. In the bowl, he carved his initials on it, and he painted, and it was painted and beautifully done. He sailed it down the little streams and creeks by his house. Even when the waters would rise, that little boat could navigate itself and cut right through the currents. He would run downstream and pick it up and do it again and again spending hour upon hour with his blood bow. One day the rains was harder than normal and the stream turned into torrent. He thought my boat is still stronger than the torrents. He ran outside in the rain and sailed the boat. It would cut right through the currents and stayed upright as far as he could see. He ran down, picked up his boat and let do it again. He was so delighted with the boat. Down the stream there covered there was a covered covert, not ten to fifteen yards long. He thought, "Oh, it was a, it will sail through. Then I will sail. Then I will run to the other side of the covert and retrieve it." So he let the boat go and cut right through. He ran to the other side and waited, but his beloved boat never appeared. Frustrated, he thought, "What am I going to do?" He ran to the entrance of the covert, then to the exit. He checked again and again and ran home. He got to the flashlight and peered into the dark covenant, but to no avail. He had lost his boat. He walked home sad and discouraged. That night he couldn't sleep. A week or two later he was walking in town and he saw his boat on display. It was in a dusty pawn shop wi window. Quickly he ran in, sir, that's my boat. You found it. The boat in the window says for sale. For sale, that's my boat. I made it. For $18 is your boat. That's what price is on it. No, I built the boat. I painted it. I even have my initials on the boat. It doesn't matter. It's finders, keepers, losers, weepers. 18 bucks. He protested. It's my boat. I made it. $18 was the store owner's final words. The little boy walked out so discouraged, but he, but he wouldn't let his discouragement win. He went from house to house and asked, Can I sweep your porch? Can I rake your lawn? Can I wash your dog? You just tell me what to do. He gathered dollar bills and coins, and after a day had half. He had $18 in an old sock. He went back to the store but put the sock on the counter. Sir, $18 I counted twice. The owner counted the coins and the bills and said, Yep, you're right, $18. All right, now you can take the boat. The little boy scooped up at that beloved boat and ran as fast as he could home from the, that mean old man. He sat under the tree and hugged the boat. I'm going to take better care of you than I ever had before because now I own you twice. Not only did I make you, but I bought you back. That is the love of God, God for us. Not only did he make us, but he bought us back. When we understand that kind of love that God has for us, then we understand the importance of letting Him shape us. But we as humans do, we as humans do not have that power by ourselves. For some reason, we want to grab into the reins and not let go. So God gives us the power of the Holy Spirit to help us lay down our right to override God, and to have the strength to overcome the flesh. When we catch that, we are at the beginning to understand what God means to walk in the power of the Spirit of God. We want to be that kind of people today and not for sale. This is the off to call song.